Hello, Leiden. 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 Welcome Hi. to our weekly show. Thank you for inviting me. Nice having you. Um, so, Vasya, let's start uh, okay. from a very short introduction about you. Yes. Um, as you can understand from the name, I am Greek. Mm-hmm. And I have been living here for already eight years. I'm a psychologist working and living here. And I have founded like five years ago uh, my own private practice called Anti-Loneliness. That's beautiful. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. What about you, Lavinia? Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Lavinia Bailey. I originate from London. I've lived in the Netherlands for about 30 years. I'm currently working full-time in the European Space Agency, but recently started my own event company, whereby I do retreats, corporate events, um, incorporated in health, exercise, dance, because dancing is my passion. I used to have a dance school here years ago. That's amazing. Are you yeah. Leidenized yet? Since you have been here, living here for I 30 years. I absolutely love Leiden. I, I am currently living just outside Leiden, but Leiden is just in my heart. I just think it's the most gorgeous place I've ever been to. Oh, that's love amazing. It. Nice to know. Um, as you know, we have a little tradition in our show. Um, have you watched our other yes. episode of uh-huh. our show? That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we are being watched. Uh, we have... We usually ask our guests to bring little items that are close to their heart and, you know, have some kind of memory attached to it. Why don't we start from you, Vasya? What did you bring us today? Okay. It was difficult for me to choose only one. Yeah, you had more items? Mm, yes. <laughs> so, this is my paintbrush, uh, because I, one of them, and because mm. I have, I don't know how many, um, because I love painting. And this is how I recharge from a very busy week, from a very stressful week. I save one day, usually Sunday, so that I can, uh, you know, put my canvas up and my colors and mix them and make a mess, but just enjoy uh, the activity. So I like painting. That's beautiful. That's your way of unloading, basically. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Yeah. What about you, Lavinia? What did you bring us? Ah, <laughs> this has got something that's really in my heart, which is two... Whether you can see this. Mm. Portobello I've Road. got things on my wall that are all different sayings, and there's, this is where I come from. It's in my heart. And I'm desperately looking for a nice one of these for Leiden, so if any of the listeners and watchers can point me in the right direction, I'm desperate for one in Leiden so that I've got both places that are in my heart on my wall. Shout out to Leiden uh, business owners. Yes, please, please. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I love Portobello Road. Oh, way. it's an amazing oh. place. But I, mean, I did a lot of I love Leiden in too, and I want one for Leiden, a special yeah. one. But it has to be tin. It has mm. to be tin. Mm. But we'll keep an open eye. Okay. And let you know. Thanks for sharing. As you know, we also created some short profiles, little videos about you um, that you haven't seen yet, right? No. Um, <laughs> yeah, why don't we watch first Vasya, yours? Good morning, Vasya. Hi, Tahir. This is the first time I'm interviewing somebody on a street. <laughs> Why we are here? Well, because this is the first street that I came to live when I arrived in, in Leiden. And it's a beautiful street, actually. Let me show the perspective of the street. So yeah. we have a canal. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a place where you can find peace and quiet, but a few blocks away, you can be in the whole Heart vibe of the, of the city yeah exactly let's walk to yours, your yeah, old house sure yeah so how you ended up in Leiden um, I studied psychology in Greece yeah. and I also continue with my master in Greece and then I worked for a couple of years there but mm-hmm. then I decided that I wanted to live abroad or try the experience of living abroad okay. and I thought that the best way to do that to experience things um, to its full let's say uh, magnitude was to come here for the second master. Okay. So I came here in Leiden, I applied and I was accepted and that's why I came to live here because it is the student uh, accommodation. Accommodation, yeah. 
It's a very, very quiet street. It is. And look and at the trees. It's so beautiful. Slotal Star's office is just at the end where the cars are, just a few steps away. Yeah. So this is where you live? That's the door. Oh, wow. That's a huge door. <laughs> it's quite a historic building. Exactly. Exactly. So how many, how, how long you lived on this space? One year. Okay. One year. And, and what do you do in Leiden now? Now I'm working as a psychologist. I founded my own company called anti Loneliness, which is a company that offers mental health services. We support people when they're going through hard times in life. So what are the top three complaints or symptoms or issues people come up to you with? Uh, anxiety, depression, and you said top three, yeah? so I have to choose. <laughs> so what are the top causes for that? Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. Why they, they are suffering from anxiety or depression? What are the reasons for that? Most common reasons. Um, well, mainly anxiety is the mindset that makes us think that there's something that we need to chase, that we are not good enough, that we need to try to do something more, that we are not doing something right. And we're trying to find what is the right thing to do. So that's why many people that they are suffering from anxiety, they have a lot of negative thoughts. They don't think that they are good enough people. They judge themselves all the time. They are also doubting about their decisions. And also when they are about to take action, they procrastinate a lot. When you are upset or you are depressed or you are suffering from anxiety or uneasy, where do you go in Leiden? Mm. What do you do? I love nature. Nature is my therapy. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely go to uh, parks, lakes, somewhere that I can wander, I can, I can uh, find some Top peace. Top favorite places? Well, uh, the Lights Out, the park, the big park that we have. Mm -hmm. um, there's another lake in Oosthuist, between Oosthuist and Varmon that I like walking around. Mm -hmm. Um, and Leiden, of course. I mean, we have all these beautiful streets, Rappenburg. Where should a Greek person recommend anyone to go? Greek restaurant? Yeah. My, my favorite Greek restaurant is Rodos, which is very central. Uh, and I love it there because they have a huge variety of Greek foods, but also uh, these foods are cooked with quality ingredients. Okay, I'm going to ask you quick uh, some words mm -hmm. you can give me one liners on that oh um, love love is a decision relationship relationships are hard and not hard friendship friendship is real family um, family is boundaries depression depression is okay you Shall I answer with you or with I? <laughs> okay. One-liner. Uh, One-liner. Um, I am grateful. Nice. Wow. Oh, beautiful. Uh, <coughs> back and forth with Tahir. It was really fast. <laughs> yeah. It can be very fast and challenging. <laughs> um, Vasya, uh, you're a psychologist. Yes. Is there any moment when you are just socializing and introduce yourself as a psychologist and all of a sudden people are... Uh, telling you about their problems and kind of having a small session with you instead of just socializing? Uh, not exactly. Actually, um, they're either relaxed, okay, with that, or the opposite. They're more reserved because they think I'm judging or I'm making, you know, like a diagnosis or something. <laughs> and sometimes they do say that to me. Oh, now you, you, you know what I'm thinking, eh? No, I don't. I'm not like a magician or something. You know, it's okay. And I don't carry my profession all the time with me. I don't want to, uh, yeah, judge or think or try to understand the other person. You know, I just be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely understand. Yeah. <coughs> Lavinia, let's see where did you take us. Okay. Hello, Lavina. How Hi. are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? It's very grey and windy today. Yes. <laughs> so you had any plans going out? You look in a very summery outfit. Yes, yes. Well, the summer's here at last. Hopefully. Okay. Are you sure? Because <laughs> one day it is there and the other day it's I know, not. I know, and next week apparently we're not going to have very, very good weather. So, well, come into my little castle. Oh, wow. 
By the way, this show will be on Facebook, okay? So you uh, you oh, okay. you have to be very very careful about this. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I'm I'm thinking about what I'm going to say or what I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very grey, interesting place. Oh wow, what is this? Uh, th these are, are you? These are all things that touch my heart. I I see a lot of London here. Oh, I come from London. Where from? Portobello Road, Notting Hill Gate. Oh wow, so you must be very rich to live there. Mm, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what is rich? I mean, I've got five lovely children and seven grandchildren, so yeah, I'm rich. Yeah, I can see. Whose photo is that? That's my eldest daughter on her wedding day. Okay, and uh, these are other kids? Yes, that's this is Jay, your he's son. living in London. Okay. And that's my three oldest children. Uh, and as you can see over here, my six grandchildren, but there's another one now. So how you ended up in Netherlands? Um, um, I was divorced with three children in London and then I met a Dutch guy and we moved to Holland, but unfortunately it didn't work out very well. So we ended up splitting up, which was a shame, but but I ended up with another two children, so then I was on my own with five children in between two and a half and sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So you, you decided to stay here yes. and build your life? Yes. It's, it's a much better life for, for children here. How long have you been living? Nearly 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how much change you have seen in 30 years in this area, in this country? Change? I don't think I've really seen that much change, to be honest. I think it's pretty basic here. They're very friendly. Um, yeah, they're, they're, I find them very welcoming within a certain aspect. I mean, it, it's quite difficult to actually get into that. I find that, especially around here, they, they've got their own circle of friends and family. And somebody who comes outside of the area it's a little bit difficult to sort of get in there. And of course, with coming from England, it was like I came from the moon, but that was 30 years ago. I think it's a lot more international now. What's the okay. best part of London you miss apart from the Portobello Road and Notting Hill? Um, I think that the, one of the things, one of the main things, this is my little garden. Nice. One wow. of the main things I really miss, um, please take a seat, is the English humour. I do miss the English humour. Dutch are very straight. Yes. Uh, do yes. they take your sense of humour nicely or sometimes uh, you end up in... They, they very funny... often don't understand it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, in the beginning, I, I, I made the mistake by translating English sayings and jokes into Dutch and it just doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I have been talking about that. Uh, that was my first impression of the Dutch people that because they already have established circle of friends and colleagues and uh, It's very difficult relatives. to get into that circle. Exactly. Unless you find one person and then that person introduces to another one and then another one. In that yeah. way, you slowly enter their circle. But you need that one person in the beginning to uh, yes. uh, slowly enter their yeah. circle. Um, Lavinia, um, you, yeah, you mentioned something about uh, it is better to raise kids in here. Yes, definitely. Why London wasn't good enough for raising kids in I there. I don't, I'm, I'm talking about the UK, mm. uh, not specifically London, okay. but the, I find the education system is better here. I mean, the, 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 one of the main aspects is at the end of each year, right from five years old, they'll do a test and if they don't come up to the standard they should be, they resit the year. And for instance, my grandson, mm. who's now 13, he was doing extremely well, so he jumped a year. So then you've got a class of a difference of three years, but they're all at the same level. So nobody's getting left behind. Nobody's yeah. nobody's bored because they're too intelligent to follow the the group that suits the majority of that group. And I find that an amazing system. And not only that, it makes them work hard because they don't want to reset the year. They want to go up to the next year with their friends. So they work harder. Absolutely. And then, yeah, I just find it a much better system. Yeah. And it's more inclusive. Yes. Because you don't need to uh, conform to some rules or to some yeah. standards or be yeah, a perfectionist exactly. and uh, pre focus only on results Absolutely. and achievements. Yeah. It, it is who you are and we yeah. will get along and we will meet you where you are. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Basia, uh, people go to the psychologist when they need help. Um, 
to improve their mental health. Yeah. Where do the psychologists go? <laughs> Same place. <laughs> we go to other psychologists. Of course. It's, um, it's one of the things that we have to do mm. to go to a psychologist because we want to have our mental health intact and make sure that we don't pass our own issues or our own issues don't come in the room, in the practice room. Uh, and we will be um, as objective and as neutral as possible and as um, yeah, calm and, uh, and help them when they are struggling. So it's one of our obligations to have therapy, to have a supervisor and make sure that we check with them how is it going, how do we practice, whether we need some help, what is it that challenges us, what is it that triggers us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Lavinia, you raised five kids as a single mother. Yes. Um, wow. Really. Um, Working extremely hard. <laughs> yeah. So my question is basically, what kind of challenges did you experience on the path? Um, it, funny enough, if I look back, I, I can't specifically, rem I can't remember any challenges because Every day was a challenge that I had to survive and I had to achieve something mm. to move on to the next day. So nothing, nothing actually sticks in my mind that's thinking, now that was the most difficult time. It was, it was all difficult, but all great fun. I mean, I was doing two jobs. I was working full time in the European Space Agency and I also started my own dance school where I was teaching 120 pupils in between four and 18. Is that something that you used to doing back in UK, or you um, just picked it up because well, you like doing where it? Where I picked it up, my eldest daughter went to full-time theatre school in London, the the top theatre school, and it was just, I used to end up helping, I've always been a dancer, I've always, I was always top, I was a top gymnast, when I was five years old I was um, giving style dance demonstrations in front of hundreds of people, so I've always been a passionate about music and dance, so when I came over here I thought, there isn't, I mean, I, I was actually a florist in London. I had my own flower shop. That's oh. actually my trade. <laughs> but of course, coming to Holland, I thought, uh, there's flowers everywhere in Holland. I'll do something different. What else am I passionate about? So I thought, yeah, I'll start a dance school. So, so I was working 60 hours a week with the dance school and the full-time job. And then in between that, painting the outside of my house, doing my own tiling and, yeah. Wow. Everything. Everything, yes. Well, what can I say? I'm really <laughs> impressed. <laughs> Um, I have one cat and I'm struggling to raise a cat, you know. I can't imagine how it feels like to raise five children on your own. And they're all amazing. They've all turned out and achieved so much. It's just Greatest wonderful. gift of the mother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a hard job, but at the same time, it sounds that you had such an exciting life. We did have such fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had crazy times. Absolutely crazy. I've always Were had classes. And at some point. Um, but yeah, there was a few where... But, I mean... I, a lot of the times I felt like my life was running for the bus and I get to the bus stop and I think, I've got the bus and it just moves on just before I get there and goes to the next bus stop. So I keep going to the next bus stop and then it moves to the next one. It was constantly keep going, keep going. Because yeah. I knew if I went down into the pit, I'd never get out again. So I, I had no option but to just keep focused and carry on. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Um, Vasya, you have founded uh, a reading club. Yeah. Uh, it's also called On to Loneliness, right? Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Why did you found it? When was it? And um... Um, Well, it's related also with the name Anti Loneliness because mm. the reason that I choose that name as the name of my company, the name of the book club, or I use that everywhere, it's because it's for me important that we learn how to connect with others again. And one way to do that one way was, of course, uh, going to a therapist and talking. Mm -hmm. But another way is that you join a book club. And you join a book club because you love reading books. <clears throat> and people connect better when they connect with people that they share the same interests and the same values. Yeah. So when people that they love reading, and that was my second object, my Kindle, because I love reading. Um, when people meet because they love what they do, uh, then... They, they start with the, from a place of trust and safety. They are already closer to each other. And this is exactly what happened at the book club. They already found their own mate there. And they started talking about the books, but also not about the books. They started connecting more. 
So for me, that was important to connect with people and talk about books. <laughs> That's so nice. But um, recently, I noticed in the newsletter you handed it over. Yeah. Why is that? Um, because life got busier and because I also found people that I could trust and they were doing a really good job with the mm -hmm. book club. And I also had a different interest on the books that I read. So the books that we read in the book club was more about literature. But I, I at this period, I want to read more uh, books related to my profession. So that was my focus. And then I couldn't keep up with, the, with my own book club. So I said, okay, it's about time that somebody else takes over. That's amazing that the members of your book club took over. Yeah. And that must be making you feel more comfortable Absolutely. to hand it over to the yeah. people who have been with the community for a while. In the book club, we had members that they were coming sometimes, randomly, yeah. but we had also members that they were there every meeting, every month, all the books for years. So these were the people actually that took over, the, the people that knew how, you know, uh, how to handle, you know, a, a, a group of people that they were coming from different cultures and different countries. Mm -hmm. um, they were people that they knew how to initiate conversations. They were people that they were had a genuine interest about books also. So they had all these things and that's why they make the perfect uh, people to take over. Lavinia, you're really passionate about building confidence in yes. children. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what about adults? Like, are there any tools that you know you think adults can use for building up their own confidence? Um, I think the main basic thing I tend to try and teach is to look in a mirror, put your shoulders back, take a deep breath, and look at yourself and actually say out loud, "I'm worth something. We are all worth something inside." But sometimes that gets suppressed by depression or busy workload, um, a divorce, you know, anything that's bad happened. And that suppresses that self-worth feeling. And it's it needs to come back out again. And, and just, I mean, I've coached somebody years ago. I, I coached somebody that I knew that um, was really quite depressed and couldn't find a girlfriend, couldn't meet anybody. He, in, I mean, he wasn't fantastic looking. But inside, I could see such beauty. He was the most sweetest guy you could possibly come, again, uh, come across. So I said to him, you know, for a month, just do this for me. Go home, shoulders back, deep breath, look at the mirror and say, I am worth something. And he said, you know, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and he did it. And then, he, I mean, he, he was, at the time, he was working as a waiter in a restaurant. And um, he saw this girl that was went in there. And then at the end of his shift, she, she left at the same time. And he thought... I'm going to go and ask her. So he yeah, he went over to ask her, and you know, for a date, for a, uh, to meet up for a meal. And now they are married with twin boys and a little girl living in France, wow. running their own business, as happy as a sandboy. That's amazing. And it you really, must feel proud. Oh, really. when I see photographs of them on Facebook, it just touches my heart, and it sort of gives me a lump yeah. in my throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Um, Basia, as a psychologist, are there any other tools that you usually recommend your clients? in terms of confidence building? Um, there's a misconception about our own worth. Mm -hmm. And there are people that they believe, and I, I don't blame people, eh? it's the society's messages all around us, that they believe that our worth is defined by our achievements, mm -hmm. by our looks, by our possessions, by all these tangible things. And we think, for example, who am I to go and talk to this girl? I don't have, yeah. a, 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 you know, a lot of money. I don't have an expensive car. Mm -hmm. I don't have expensive. But this is so wrong because people like each other because of who they are. Exactly. Yeah. Because, yeah, we all deserve to have somebody in our life. We all deserve love. We all deserve it. We don't need to do anything to prove that we deserve it. So that's the change of our mindset that we try to do in therapy. Mm -hmm. Shift from I am worthy when dot 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 or i'm worthy i will be worthy if to i'm worthy that's it so yeah changing the mindset be happy with yourself is the secret you have to do that yeah of course. I, I bet it's really hard um to come to that conclusion on your own without the support of coaches and you know psychologists or yeah. anyone who has gone through similar you know of course and it's not life. something that we said it once and then oh yeah. okay fine i got it no, we have to do it to say it again, because these are beliefs that we have been carrying 
for decades in our minds. So they're re deeply rooted and they're not easy to change. So we need to say that again and we say, we agree, but then you go and then you again feel very shy and very not confident and insecure in front of the girl. What happened? Yeah. Well, I thought, who am I to go and talk to her? Oops, let's go back. <laughs> Yeah, it's really hard yeah. to uh, dismantle your habits, yeah, of course, yeah. even if it's just an opinion about your of course. own, you know, life. Our brain doesn't like chains. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you have to uh, retrain it slowly yeah. at the age, age of digital connectivity. I mean, this era is screaming connectivity. Why do you think there's so many people who are lonely? One reason is because I think that we are overcompensating with social media. Mm which means that we have turned from quality to quantity. I have a thousand followers. I have 2000 friends. Yeah, yeah. We're focusing on the numbers <clears throat> and we also focus on what other people see. Mm. So other people see happy photos, uh, smiles, vacation on, uh, you know, uh, Mount Everest or yeah. whatever. And we project an image that it's not, of course, real. That's so true. Yeah, mm. and that's not real connection. Real connection means authenticity, means vulnerability, means I have to share also my struggles. So that's why I think we struggle with loneliness because we need to preserve that fake image, but at the same time, we have nobody to talk about the real stuff that is happening inside us. And that's why we need, of course, to talk about loneliness. And that's why there's an epidemic, another pandemic of, uh, yes. in our era yeah. of loneliness. Yeah. Uh, but also, can I say something yeah, about, um, about loneliness? There's a part of loneliness that is normal. Mm. We cannot escape it. We're coming yeah. to a new country. What's yeah, more course. normal than feeling lonely? Of course. You are discovering yourself. You are, you are trying to build your, build your own identity in here. So, of course, we're going to feel lonely. Yeah. Yeah. It's not always something like a disorder or something that we need to fix. Of course. Changing jobs. Of course, you're going to feel lonely the first few weeks or maybe months or hours. I don't know. A part of it is it's normal. It's okay. And we just accept it. It doesn't mean anything about, about us. We're just discovering ourselves. We're just discovering new things in our life so it's okay yeah yeah absolutely um speaking of leiden uh, we asked you to bring us your favorite leideners who did you uh, share with us Fassi? who is your favorite leidener well my favorite leidener is um ipek ipek kotan she's a turkish ceramic artist and she lives and works here in leiden in leiden yeah. Oh, lovely. Yes. Uh, she is world famous. She has done so many uh, yeah, uh, collaborations with museums all over the world, London, New York, Turkey, whatever you can imagine. She's very uh, yeah, famous. But also she gives uh, workshops on how to work with clay. Uh, Lavinia, what about you? Who is your favorite Leidner? Um, it's, I met her, um, first of all, she was a friend of my daughter's at school, and then she started with my dance school, and she was one of my singers, and now she's become quite famous in Leiden, and that's Micah Hertz. She that's was, um, she's now doing a lot of MC work, um, she's done presenting for I Love Leiden. Really? Yeah, she's quite well known. Uh, she's done the Idols, she used to be in a, a Dutch group called Kuss. And she's still singing and working with a lot of the famous DJs. And she was last year on the main stage as the MC at Mysteryland. So she's worked her way up. That's quite amazing. Fast and wow. full of energy. <laughs> amazing smile. Never, I've never seen her without a smile. And just a lovely, lovely lady. That is fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful guests. Beautiful stories. Thank you, guys. It was really fun. Thank you for inviting us. A lot of diverse subjects. Well, folks, Thank that's you. the end of another episode of Hello Leiden. Um, we will be with you next Saturday at 9 p.m. Uh, don't forget to watch, um, like, and share. We really appreciate your comments because this is how we improve ourselves. Um, and if you are a foreigner living in Leiden, just like Lavinia and Basia, um, please email us at hello Leiden at slotostad.nl and we would love to have you here and just have a chat. Take care.
Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Welcome to Leiden. Hello, 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 Leiden.